everybody and welcome on such a lovely sunny morning. I hope it's sunny where you are and I hope that after this you'll be able to go and enjoy some of the sunshine. Some of you may know me from the previous sessions. I'm Joanna Murphy. I'm the chair of the National Parent Forum of Scotland. Thanks, as I say, thanks for coming along today. I can't believe this is our eighth and final session of all the series of webinar, webinars. I really hope you and your children have enjoyed them as much as I have. I'd like to, at the outset, thank Chris McKenna from Count on Us for putting these sessions together and for helping us look at numbers in such a different and more accessible way. We're looking to do some more of these sessions, so keep, please keep an eye out for them. Hopefully, at the begin, just in the in the in the, the weeks before the beginning of the new term, that we'll we'll be able to to introduce some more subjects to get everybody maths ready for going back into school. If you haven't already, if you sign up for our newsletter, and um, that way you'll know you'll get to know everything we're planning over the summer and when the time comes for us to to start this back to school uh, program. As a parent myself, I know how difficult the last few weeks and one months have been. I'm looking forward to the school holidays. In actual fact, it is the school holidays for me in, in Glasgow. We st we, so, so, and you'll all get there soon if you're not on holiday already. I realise that they might not look like the previous year's holidays for most of us, but nevertheless, I'm sure we'll all enjoy the break. For those of you who still want to do a bit of work over the holidays, I hope Chris's recorded sessions on our YouTube channel will help. You'll find the links on our website, but you'll also find them in our new STEM nutshell. This nutshell highlights the importance of STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and maths. These nutshells are a series of information guides for parents, written by parents, and in a parent-friendly and parent-relevant language. Um, that NPFS is famous for our nutshells and I hope if you look onto our website you'll see the new STEM one just launched today in partnership with Skills Development Scotland and I hope you'll have some time to go and have a look at it and as I say have a read over it, print, over, print it out if you like and take some ideas from it. Finally I'll just go over the housekeeping for today. Everyone will be muted, all cameras will be switched off as usual so you'll only see and hear from Chris throughout most of the session. Questions, please use the chat function. Um, I think we've been quite good at answering questions as we're going along, but if it's not possible, we'll get back to you afterwards. And I'm sure you'll all be respectful as you have been very uh, respectful over the last few weeks. Remember that children are joining their parents in this. So just remember that when posting your comments. Even if you filled it in before, please, if you fill in the survey after the session, it would be really, really helpful to us. And please remember to keep the hashtag NPFS maths going over the summer. We love sharing your pictures of you and your children working away and it's, it's really great to see them. It's, and if you want to do that over the summer, if you start to do a wee bit of revision, then keep us in the loop and we'll, we'd, as I say, it's really, really great to see them. For the last time, I'd like to, to go over to Chris, but before I do that, I'd like to thank everybody that's been involved with these webinars. Um, all the team back behind the scenes who are answering the questions and all the, and, and the, the input from Education Scotland, Chris himself, obviously, from Counting on Us, but also the NPFS team who have run all these uh, seminars with one or two hitches, but we've managed to get there in the end. So thanks again to everybody who's done that. So as I say for the last time, over to you, Chris. Looking forward to seeing that today's session. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final session. Uh, today, we're going to look at, Justin and I are going to look at uh, problem solving, and we're going to use a technique or a strategy called bar modeling. So like always, I will share the scene with you. And hopefully you have a pen or pencil and paper, and we are ready to jot our thinking down and our strategies. And as always, you can shout out at the screen if you know the answer. But today, it's very important that we have that pencil in our hand and we jot down the strategies of bar modeling here. Again, use the hashtag MPFS Maths. There's nothing better than going on after the session and seeing pictures of children working through their maths. Uh, that's what keeps us going here and that's why we're doing it. Again, 
All slides and resources will be found at this website, countonus.org.uk forward slash learning hyphen together. Hashtag MPFS Maths. All sessions are on YouTube and you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. If you're doing any sort of maths and you're struggling with it, send us a wee message on Twitter or Facebook and we will probably answer it within the hour because we're like that. We're geeky and we like helping <laughs> and checking and doing some maths. Right, so today we're going to look at basic problems, some ratio problems, and if we get time, we'll do some puzzles at the end. So, bar modelling is just a visual way to represent a problem that helps us to understand what, op what operation to carry out. So it lets us know, is it an addition problem, is it a subtraction problem, a multiplication or, or division. So, and it ties in with all the kind of stuff we've been doing so far. So this has been a kind of very visual kind of series of tutorials and bar model is just the same. It's a visual way to look at maths. So first thing we're going to get you to do, George, read this question. George has 20 pencils in his classroom. David has 17 more pencils than George. How many pencils does David have in his classroom? So what we're going to do is write down George and draw a bar like that and put 28 in it. So this is George's pencil. We're going to use this bar to represent George's pencil. So write down George and draw a bar or a rectangle as it looks and write 28 in it. Because it tells me up here George has 28 pencils. So we're going to draw a bar to represent George's pencils. Now David has 17 more pencils. So David has got 28 pencils, but he's also got 17 more than that. So what I want to draw is an extra bar on David's because he's got an extra 17, or he's got 17 more. And the question is, how many pencils does David have? Well, we can see David has got 17 more than George. So that means he's got 17 more than the 20 that George has. So what operation do we have to do here then? What, how to find out how many pencils David has got? What operation do I have to do? I don't want the answer. I want to know what operation. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. What, oper what operation do I have to do, Austin? Addition, good. Yeah. So um, to work out what David has, we're going to say we're going to add the 28 and the 17, and that equals 45. So David has 45 pencils in the classroom, in his classroom. And it's important that we answer the question. The answer isn't just 45. The answer is David has 45 pencils in his classroom. And again, it's all about this here is kind of showing your working or showing your strategy. Here's the calculation we had to do, and there is our answer. Nice and straightforward. Any comments, pop them in the chat box. If there are a question for me, we will answer them. Next question. So next question, Beatrice scored 34 points in a quiz. Julie scored 15 points less. How many points did Julie score? So some of you might know the answer already, but if you're struggling, it's nice to draw a bar model. So Beatrice, let's draw a bar. She's got 34 points. Now, Julie scored 15 points less. So let's write Julie down. Julie scored 15 points less. So let's draw a wee bar over at this side here. It's 15, because Julie scored 15 points less. So this bit here, must be Julie's point. So we're drawing a first bar that's just 15 over here. And then this bit in here must be Julie's points because she scored 15 points less than Beatrice. So this bar has to be smaller than 34, which it is, and it's 15 smaller. So again, what operation do we have to do here? Is it addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Do you know what it is? To work out how many points Julie scored, what operation is it? You can write the answer in the chat box. What do you think, Austin? Subtraction. Subtraction. So to work out Julie's score, we're going to do 34 taking away 15, which equals 19. And again, we answer the question, Julie scored 19 points. First of all, can you just type into the, the chat box where you're from, where you're watching to, from today? Is it Glasgow? Is it Edinburgh? Is it Dundee? Uh, Inverness? Aberdeen? Tell us where you're watching from. There might not be that many people from Glasgow today because Glasgow are on holiday now. As you can see, I'm using my gin glass to drink my healthy water this morning. It's the biggest glass we have. 
It's not it's lime water. Uh, okay, so let's go. Next question. So, next question, it says... Oops, Gordon, given one box of chocolates. Claire is given three boxes of chocolates. Draw a bar model to represent this. So let's write Gordon and draw one box or one bar in for Gordon because Gordon's getting one box of chocolates. Claire is given three boxes of chocolates. So we're drawing Gordon, we've got one bar to represent one box of chocolates. Claire is given three boxes of chocolates. So I'm going to drink Claire and we're going to draw three bars for Claire because she's got three boxes of chocolates. Gordon's got one box of chocolates. Now I'm going to tell you some information. Each box contains 10 chocolates. How many chocolates does Gordon and Claire get? So, what we're going to do now is going to put 10 in all the boxes because every box has got 10 chocolates. So we can see Gordon has got 10 chocolates. And how many chocolates does Claire have? Type into the box how many chocolates does Claire have? Shout it out at home. Austin, shout it out. Claire's got 10. You can either do 10 plus 10 plus 10 or 10 multiplied by 3. So Gordon's got 10 chocolates and Claire has 30 chocolates. Some shout outs here. So we're from Edinburgh, Motherwell, Cowinning, Newton, Mairns, The Borders, Glasgow, Giffnock. So we've got a big spread today. Who's watching at home? Next question. Paul and Julie have 12 sweets between them. Paul has three times as many sweets as Julie. How many sweets does Paul have? Okay, so let's read that again. Paul and Julie have 12 sweets between them. Paul has three times as many sweets as Julie. How many sweets does Paul have? So we're going to draw a picture for this sentence here. Paul has three times as many sweets as Julie. So if Julie's got one box of chocolates, one bar, Paul has three times as many, so Paul's got to get three bars. Are you understanding that? That's from this middle sentence here. Paul has three times as many sweets as Julie. So we draw Julie with one bar and Paul with three bars. That represents this middle sentence here. Now we're told that we have 12 sweets between them. But how many bars do we have in total here? We've got four bars in total. So to work out how many each bar represents, what operation am I going to do? Let's we're going to do division. So we're going to take these 12 sweets and we're going to divide them by the four bars. What's 12 divided by four, Austin? Three. Good. So 12 divided by four equals three. So that means each bar must be three sweets. So how many sweets does Paul have? So we can see it's three plus three plus three, or it's three times three. So Paul has nine sweets. Do we understand this? Yeah? If you don't understand it, let us know and we can try and explain it again. But we're going to do some more examples, so hopefully by the time we get to the end of this wee lesson, you'll understand the kind of process of bar modelling. Right, next question. Ruben saves £20 for his summer holiday. Ivan saves four times as much money for his holiday. How much does Ivan save for his holiday? Austin's nodding here because this is his cousins, Ruben and Ivan. So I'd like to use some family members for the examples. Yeah. Ruben saves twenty pounds for his summer holiday. Ivan saves four times as much for his holiday. How much does money does Ivan save? So let, first of all, we're going to write Ruben, and he's got twenty pounds. Ivan saves four times as much. So how many boxes or how many bars are we going to draw for Ivan? Four. So here Ivan's got. Four lots of 20, or four bars of 20. So, how much does Ivan save for his holiday? Do you know? 80 pounds. So I'll do 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20, or you do 20 pound times four. So Ivan saves pounds for solving. Now I'm just going to go back because uh, Maria's asking for that one to be explained again. So I'm just going to go back. So first of all, Maria, we've got Paul and Julia have got 12 sweets between them. Okay, so we know that. But Paul has three times as many sweets as Julia. So 
say we give a Julie one bag or one portion or one share of the sweets. Okay, so Julie, because Paul's got three, because Paul has three times as many, whatever Julie has, Paul has to have three times that amount. So if Julie gets one bag or one box of sweets, just think of it as one box. We don't know how many is in a box just now. But Paul tells me this year, Paul has three times as many sweets as Julie. So if Julie's got one bag, Paul must get three bags or three boxes or three shares. So now we have one, and Paul's got one, two, three. So we've got one, two, three, four bags of four shares or four boxes of sweets. But we're told up here that they have 12 sweets between them. So these four bags or these four boxes or these four shares have 12 sweets in them. So if they've got 12 sweets in them all together, then these 12 split sweets must be split evenly between the four bags. So that's why we do 12 divided by four equals three. So there's three in here, there's three in here, there's three in here, there's three in here. So Julie's getting three sweets, Paul's got three plus three plus three, which is nine. And we can just check, is that 12 all together? Three plus three plus three plus three, yep. Paul's got nine, is that three times as many as Julie? Yep, three, three's nine. So the question works out. Alexandra loves this. Good, I'm glad you like this, Alexandra. And hopefully, Maria, that makes sense, seeing it a second time round. But stay with us, Maria. We're going to do similar examples like this, and hopefully it will become clear as we move on. So I've done the Ivan and Ruben one. Okay, next question. Robert has £45 to spend on football equipment. He spends £10 on cones, and then he buys five footballs with the rest. How much is one football? Okay, so Robert spent £45 on football equipment. He spends £10 on cones, and then he buys five footballs with the rest. How much is one football? So first of all, I would start with Robert and his £45. Then I would say, right, well, he spends £10, doesn't he? He spends £10 on cones, so I'm going to draw another bar and say, right, he spent £10 of the 45 So what is left in here, Austin? What, how do I work out what's left in this bit here? If he spent £10 on uh, cones, what's left in here for the five footballs? £35. Good, so that was the subtraction, wasn't it? So we want to see what's left for the five football. So we do 45, subtract the 10 pounds, which is 35 pounds. But then he buys five footballs with the rest. So I want you to draw another bar. i basically split that bar up into five because out of this 35, he buys five footballs. So I'm splitting this 35 into one, two, three, four, five. So remember that represents 35 pounds. We've split it up into five bits for the five footballs. How, what operation, so it's, again, it's important, what operation do I do to work out what each football is? Is it addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? How do you work out what one football is? Remember it was 35 pounds, splitting it up into five sections for the five footballs. Can you tell us what operation is up here, Austin? Sorry? Division. Good, it's going to be a division. So it's going to be 35 divided by 5, which equals £7. So each football is going to be £7. One football costs £7. Okay, so again, these slides will be on the website. They're on the website just now. You can download them. You can work through them again. There is also a workbook on the website, some tasks for you to try. Similar to this. So if you're looking at this question, you can look at similar questions on the task and use this or these slides to help you. You can also watch this back on YouTube to uh, look at the explanations again. And re repetition is good. The key to everything is repetition. Obviously, we want to understand it. We want to look at the visual clues so that it can make connections in our brain. But repetition is very good. If you want to get better at the piano, or football, gymnastics, dancing, whatever it is you're doing, you repeat. You repeat the practice, don't you? So there's no, sometimes obviously we, we want to learn in a visual way, we want to understand the maths, but sometimes that repetition of doing the, uh, the process over and over again really makes connections with the brain as well. So don't forget about that. 
practice makes perfect. What's my saying? It's perfect. That's the right <laughs> thing. I know. My, my saying is practice makes better. Right, next question. So say we're going to do something like three quarters of 20. So what I want you to draw as a bar is 20 in the middle. So the bar represents 20. And we have to find three quarters of 20. So we're going to chop our bar into how many sections, you think? Um, four. Good. Because we're finding three quarters, we need to start off by chopping it into four, into quarters. So let's draw another bar below it, but chopped into four bits. So if this bar is 20, and this bar is 20, but we've chopped it into four bits, how are we going to work out the size of each? Section. Is it multiplication, division, addition, subtraction? What do you think, Austin? Division. Division. 20 divided by? Um, four. Equals? Five. Good. So each section is five. So just check five plus five plus five plus five or four lots of five is 20. How, what fraction do I want? Um, three. Four, Quarters. Three. So how many, how many bits do we want out of the four here? Three. Three. So we want three bits out of the four. So we want this bit, that bit, and that bit. So three quarters of 20 is? 15. It's five plus five plus five, or five times three. So three quarters of 20 is five times three, which equals 15. 15. So that's a good way to do your division. Again, you can change that to two thirds of 12, uh, five sixths of 18, or whatever it is you want to look at. So we did a bit of fractions uh, when was fractions session three? No, sorry, session four fractions was. So again, this could you could tie in with, with the strategy as well. Okay, so we're on to ratio problems already. So we've done a few addition, subtraction, the, uh, sorry, the addition, subtraction, yeah, multiplication, a wee bit of division in there. So now we're looking at ratio. And I think this is where bar modeling really, really helps us. So First question I want to ask you, what is the ratio of blue to red? So type in the comment box, what is the ratio of blue to red? Type in the comment box, what is the ratio of blue to red? Or shout out at home, what's the ratio of blue to red? Do you know the ratio of blue to red, Austin? Red. Oh, the ratio of blue to red? No, no. No. Never heard of the word. Right. Ratio just means right. So how many parts are blue and how many parts are red? That's the answer. Um, two blue parts, three red parts. So two blue parts, three red parts. So here, look, Justin, the ratio of blue to red, the way we write a ratio is blue and I'll, I'll kind of dot, dot, dot red. So there's two blue parts, sorry, two blue parts, and there's three red parts. So that's all the ratio is. Nice and easy. So the ratio of blue to red is two to three. And that's how we write ratio, two dot dot three. If I was to ask you of the ratio red to blue, which is important, We'd have to do it the other way around about three to two. Okay, so the ratio of blue to red is two to three because I said blue first. The ratio of red to blue would be the other way around about. Next question for everybody, type the answer into the comment box. Shout it out at home. What is the ratio of blue to red this time? Don't shout out yet, Austin. Let everybody type the answers in the box. What is the ratio of blue to red now? Are we typing the answers into the comment box? Are we shouting out at home? Austin, tell us. Five blues and two reds. Five blues and two reds. So how do you say it? Five. Dot, dot, two. Good. Five dot, dot, two. Brilliant. So again, the five has to come first because it's blue to red. So next question. I'm sorry. Again, if I was asking the ratio red to blue, we would, the two would have to come first. But in this question here, we're asking blue to red, so it's five dot dot two. Now, I want you to draw me a ratio of three to four. So on your pen and paper, draw me a ratio that demonstrates three to four. So on your pen and paper, draw me a ratio that demonstrates three to four. I want you to think, how many bits must there be all together? How many bits must there be all together? Seven. Seven. Would you make them all exactly the same size? Yep. Yep. Would you make them all exactly the same color? No. Nope. No, because you've got to 
you've got to distinguish the difference, haven't you? So you, earlier on, blue this ratio of blue to red, so they've got to be different. So you can either have three blues and four reds. Mm -hmm. So that's a ratio of three to four, isn't it? Or you could put letters in like three A's and four B's or something like that, or shade three of them with your pen or pencil and leave the other four blank. Does it always have to be um, blue and red? No, it doesn't always have to be blue and red. Uh, you could be green and yellow, yep. Orange uh, and pink. Orange and pink. Shaded or unshaded isn't the normal way to do it. <laughs> so shade three parts and leave the other parts blank. Good, so now we understand that, let's use bar modeling for ratio problems uh, and you'll see just how useful it is. So, Scarlett and Anne clean out the garage for their parents. Oh, it's supposed to be Scarlett and Austin, but it says <laughs> Anne up, oops. <laughs> but, sorry, give me a second to just fix that there. It's supposed to be Scarlett and Austin, which is Austin's sister. Right, sorry, here we go. Uh, let's come back to share the screen. Sorry, guys, give me a second. That's not what I'm looking for. For God's sake. Get it. Right, here we go, share screen. Sorry, Scarlett and Austin. So this is Scarlett, Austin's sister, and Austin clean out their garage for their parents, me and my wife. Scarlett does two hours work, and Austin does three hours work. They get paid thirty pounds for this. Yeah. How much good? How much should they each get? So if Scarlett did two hours work and you did three hours work, should you both get fifteen pounds each? Huh? No, because you've done more, haven't you? Mm -hmm. So let's draw a bar model for that. So if Austin does two hours work and Scarlett does three hours work, let's draw a bar model. So there's five parts: one, two, three, four, five. Because Scarlett does two hours work and Austin does three hours work. So, Scarlett, I'm going to put an S and an S in these two bits because Scarlett did two hours work and Austin did three hours work. So, he, he should get three sections. Yeah, so there's a ratio of two to three here. Scarlett's done two hours, Austin's did three hours. So, how much should they, they get paid? But how much money did they get from their parents for doing this? Um, 30 pounds. 30 pounds. How many sections are there? Um, five. So 30. What operation are we going to do to work out how much each section is? Divide seven. So 30 divide five equals? Six. Six. So each section should be six pounds. Scarlett does two hours, so she should get six pounds plus six pounds, which is? Five pounds. And Austin does three sections, that's six plus six plus six, or six times three, which is? Um, 18 pounds. So Scarlett's to get six pound times two, 12 pound. Austin's to get six pound times three, which is 18 pound. And this, does this add up to 30, 12 plus 18? Yes. So that's how we do a ratio problem using bar modeling. So draw the picture out, draw the ratio out, decide, do 30 divided by five to get what each section is, and then work out what, how much each person should get. Hopefully that made sense. Any questions you ask in here? So next question, Robert and Anne share £32 in the ratio of 5 to 3. Who gets more money and by how much? So we need to draw a bar model. How many parts should be in the bar model, Austin? Um, eight. <laughs> so I want you to draw a bar model out with eight parts. Robert's to get... Oops. Robert's to get how many parts? Um, five. Five, okay. I'm going to do this one live on the board here. So let me just share the screen. Magic board. The magic board. Let's <laughs> see if it works. So give me a second, guys. So we're going to share. Oops. Share screen here. Let's see this bit here. Yep. So Robert and Anne. Where's my board? I've got it here. So Robert and Anne. I have to share in the ratio three to five. And Robert's to get three shares and Anne's to get five shares. Is that right? No. No? All the way Sorry. Okay. This lets me go back here. <laughs> so Robert's to get five and Anne's to get three, is it? Um, yeah. yeah. 
Robert's to get five shares, Anne's to get three shares. So different ways we can do this. So I'm going to chop it into eights, or eight parts of theirs. Okay, there's four parts. I'm going to just half all these. Doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same size. So Robert's to get five parts. So R, R, R. Oops, that was not an R. R, R. Anne's to get three parts. So how many parts are there all together? So we take the fare to two pounds and we divide it by eight, which equals four pounds each. Which means all of these sections are four. So how much money does Robert get? Well, Robert gets that section there. So it's four plus four plus four plus four plus four. So it's five bits at four which equals 20 pounds. Anne gets three bits at four, so this is Anne's bits here, so Anne. And she gets four pound times three, which is 12 pounds. So we're basically getting 32 pounds. We're splitting it in the ratio five to three. So that means we needed a bar model with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. To work out which then each part, we do 32 divided eight, which equals four pounds. Put four in all of these. Robert gets five bits at four, and Anne gets three bits at four. So any questions to ask, please pop them in the comment box. We shall talk to you for a second. So. Good, I see Pamela Wine is answering questions. I'm just looking at the chat box now. Good, excellent. Right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Any more questions coming through in the chat box now? Good, okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint then. Yeah. Oops, so, oops, here we go. So a new problem, Kevin and Rose share some money in the ratio two to five. Rose gets 18 pounds more than Kevin. How much money did they share? So I'm gonna draw a bar model to represent this. So how many parts do I need? Uh, seven. Okay, how many parts is Kevin to get? How many parts is Rose to get? Five. Let's draw a bar out to represent that. So Kevin's getting two parts, Rose is getting five parts. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That drawing, yeah. Now it tells me here, Rose gets... Um, 18 pounds more than Kevin. Now looking at this picture, what does she get more in the picture than Kevin? So forget the 18 pounds, just like, look at the picture, what does she get more? She gets um, three more um, spaces or... Good shares. Does it say she gets three more sections or three more shares? So you see KK matches this RR. So we've got this wee bit here as the extra, isn't it? So that's what she gets extra on the picture because Kevin's got two shares, Rose's got five shares. So basically she's getting three shares more. But it tells me here, what does that say? It's 18 pounds more than Kevin. So this bit here must represent 18 pounds. So that is the 18 pounds more that Rose is getting. But how many sections is that over? Three. How do you figure out what's in each section? Um, you divide 18 by 3. We divide 18 by 3, and 18 divided by 3 equals? Six. Six. So each section is? Um, six pounds. Six pounds. So every section is six. These three sections are six pounds, which means every section is six pounds. Oh, so the question is, how much money did they share? But um, I know. What operation is it, first of all? It is addition. Or? Multiplication. Multiplication. Because how many bits do we have in here altogether? Um, seven. Seven sections. How much is each section? Six. Six. Okay. So what is the operation? Um, multiplication or Yeah, so what, what multiplication is it? Um, seven times six. Seven times six. And the answer is 42 um, pounds. So that's how much money they shared. Okay. So let us know how this example go, uh, went for you just now.
Did this example make sense? Are you following us? You can see in the chat box if it's a uh, Joshua, age nine, loving this. Brilliant. Good to hear it, Joshua. Right, next question. Claire spent three fifths of her pocket money on a comic book. The comic book cost Claire three pounds ninety. How much pocket money did Claire get? So Claire spent three fifths of her pocket money on a comic book. The comic book cost Claire three pound ninety. How much pocket money did Claire get? So we're going to draw a bar for Claire's pocket money. How many sections do you think we're going to put in the bar? Um, five. Good, because we're talking about fifths, we're going to make five sections. So here is Claire's pocket money. This represents her pocket money. How many, what fraction did she spend on the comic book? Um, 3.9 of that. No, no, so what fraction, sorry? Oh, three. Um, three over five. Three fifths, good. So three fifths. So that means the comic book has got to take up three of the five sections, isn't it? So the comic book has got to take up, take up three out of the five sections or three fifths of the bar model. But it tells me here how much does the comic book, comic book, comic book cost? Three pounds ninety. So this bit here must represent three pounds ninety. Mm -hmm. So three pounds ninety. Come. How many sections are here? Um, three. How do you figure out what one section is? Um, Divide um, well, um, instead of dividing three point nine by um, three, you could do um, thirty nine divided by thirteen. You think it'll be round about? Yep. So you think okay. So what we're we're doing a division here as well, but you're thinking it goes thirteen. Yep. So three pound ninety divided by three. You could divide the three pound by three, which is one pound. Ninety pounds by three, which is thirty pence. One way or other, we do three pound ninety divided by three. We get one pounds thirty. So that means every section must be one pound thirty. So how much pocket money did Claire get? So one pound thirty plus one pound thirty plus one pound thirty plus one pound thirty plus one pound thirty. Other either than that, you do one pound thirty times five. And of course, you could do one pound times five because there's a pound in each one of those. What's one pound times five? And one pound times five and five pounds. Good. What's the 30 pence times five? Um, 150. You could do your five pound plus your 150 and you get six pounds 50. So how much pocket money did Claire get? She got six pounds 50. Right. <clears throat> I am realising what time we're at, so I'm going to skip by this next example <clears throat> and go into the one after it. Yes. So, yes. Right, that's right. We've got Messi, Ronaldo and Bale are playing in the CL. What's the CL? Champions League. Champions League. Seems like Ronaldo should say goat. <laughs> Bale and Messi both score the same number of goals. Mm -hmm. Ronaldo scores three times as many goals as Messi. Ronaldo scored eight more goals than Messi. How many goals did they all score? Did they all score together? So, first things first, let's write Messi, Bale and Ronaldo down. So do that, everyone, please. Now, Messi and Bale both score the same number of goals. So if we see this represents how many goals Messi scored, this box or this bar represents how many goals Messi scored. We don't know yet, so we're just putting down a box to represent his goals. It says Bale and Messi both score the same number of goals. So if Messi gets this bar, Bale must score it the exact same. Make sense? But then it says, look this line here, Ronaldo scores three times as many goals as Messi. So if Messi scored this amount, or this bar, Ronaldo scores three times as many, so he must get three of those. Three bars, or three sections, or whatever. Good, right? So that's the picture to represent all the information so far. Bale and Messi both score the same number of goals, so they've got the same bar each. But Ronaldo scored three times as many as Messi, so he's got three times as many boxes or bars as Messi. But it says here, look, Ronaldo scored eight 
more goals than Messi. Mm -hmm. But we can see here he's also got two boxes more or two bars more. So this bit here represents his eight more goals, doesn't it? So this this bit here represents his eight more goals. So how many goals, how, how many sections does that eight more goals represent? Um, two. So how are we going to figure out which each section is worth? Um, or each bar's worth? Um, what operation? Um, division. Good, what kind of division? Tell me the division. The numbers that are um, going. Eight divided by two. Good, eight divided by two gets me? Four. Four, so that means every eight divided by two equals four because these eight goals are split over these two set extra sections. So that means it's four. So that means all the sections are four. Mm -hmm. So how many goals did they all score together? So we've got Messi's got four, Bale's got four, Ronaldo's got four, plus four, plus four. There's five bits at four, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So the total goals as they scored 20 goals all together between them. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. We've got one final question to try then. Okay, any questions? I'm going to stop just to see if there's any questions coming through. Mm. Use of football has my son's attention. Good. <laughs> right, okay, no. Right, well, we're going to try another similar question. Okay, so basically built on the same principles here. This time we've got Jane, Emma, and Brian are taking part in a dance competition. Jane and Brian both score the same number of points. Emma scores four times as many points as Jane. Emma scored 18 points more than Jane. How many points did they all score? So same as last time, let's write down the three names. Jane, Emma, Brian. Jane, Brian, Emma. Who scored the same number of points? Look at the question, Austin. Tell us who scored the same number of points. Jane and Brian scored the same number of points. So Jane and Brian both scored the same number of points. So if we give Jane one bar, we must give Brian one bar. Okay, so taking our time, drawing a picture. So bar modelling is about drawing a visual representation of the problem to help us understand the problem to help us understand how to do the problem. Now it says, what about Emma? Read that out for us, Austin. Emma scores four times as many points as Jane. So if Jane's got one bar, how many bars should Emma get? Um, four. Good, because she's scoring four times as many. So Emma's got one, two, three, four. Good, right? Now we can say, right, well, Emma scored, what does that say, Emma? Emma scored 18 more points than Jane. Emma scored 18 points more than Jane. So we can see here Emma's got these three valves that's more so. This part here represents the 18 more points, doesn't it? So she scored 18 more points, but this 18 more points refers to how many B bars? Um, three. Three. So how are we going to work out what's in each bar? Um, 18 divided by three. 18 divided by three, good. Because there's three sections here, or three bars. So 18 divided by three equals? Six. So that means every bar must be six. Because 18 divided by these three, six. And every bar is the same size. So six, 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 six. So how many points did they all score? Um, so Jane scored six, Brian scored six, and Emma scored 24, because it's four plus, sorry, six plus six plus six plus six, or four times six. So we can see how many points they all scored. And of course, how many would that be all together? 36. 36 points. Okay. 10.45, precisely. <laughs> so... Slides and resources can be found at www.countonus.org.uk forward slash learning hyphen together. The hashtag, if you're sitting at home doing these problems, take some pictures, put them onto Twitter or Facebook. The hashtag on uh, Twitter's N, hashtag NPFS maths. Let's get that trending. Let's get people seeing what they're missing out. Let's make sure people look at this on YouTube again over the summer holidays when we're sitting in a rainy day with nothing to do. You can follow us the, on Twitter, again, at Counting on Us Ed, Facebook at Counting on Us Ed. 
thank you for listening to these series of videos. Uh, obviously, people uh, have been tuning in in, in high numbers. Uh, can you please, please do this survey? Uh, it's important we get feedback on each survey, although you may have done previous surveys. We want to figure out how th these ones went, because today's one was a wee bit different. It was bar modelling and problems. Of so either take this into the address bar or get your phone out and just screenshot that QR code, that black box kind of thing there. And that will take you directly to the survey and give us your honest feedback about how today's session went. Okay, so make sure please we do this survey. And not sure what the plan is going forward. Obviously, we had that announcement eh, on what was it yesterday yeah. that the plan is that schools providing things stay the same. Eh, people will go back into normal full-time education. But I know the National Parent Forum are keen to maybe have something in place to help parents at home. So with me have more of these sessions after the summer. Uh, so you can let us know how how we can improve them. But I hope you've enjoyed it uh, over the eight sessions. Austin and I have certainly enjoyed it. Austin joined us in the third session, I think. So the first session, uh, I just wanted to see how it would work out. Was it the second session, sorry? Uh, and since then, he's been involved ever since. And he's enjoyed it, haven't you, Austin? Uh, maths can be fun. Uh, it can, it's always fun. Good. Well done, Austin. You correct me properly there. Especially when we learn in the right way and we kind of see strategies piecing together. Uh, and everybody can do maths. Uh, we need to have that perseverance. We need to have that resilience. Uh, just like we have to do, have to have in any sort of discipline, whether it's in karate, gymnastics, football, piano, you name it. We have to have that kind of practice mindset and that resilience doesn't matter if we can't do it first time we know if we look at the the learning strategies and practice and get help then we can all learn it so again make sure we type in this address this survey sorry this a uh, web address into your website uh, into your url bar or take a picture of this and complete the survey if anybody's got any questions to ask i can do my best to answer them We will enjoy our holly bobs. Thank you, Leslie Dixon. Bar modeling answers that. Thanks, Leslie Dixon. Practice makes permanent. I like that, Donna. Hello. Hello, Lisa. I take it that's Evan texting away there. Nice to see you again, Evan. <laughs> awesome. Awesome is a great motivation in our house. Brilliant. Thanks, Grace. This was my favorite, says Donna Wallace. Excellent. Thank you so much. There are plans to go on further. My son is in P7. Great to try strategies. Want to continue. Excellent. You're welcome. Boom, boom. The Venga bus is coming to the disco. Okay, Evan. Nice to see you. Evan's a bit of a character, guys. In case you haven't noticed, that's him using Lisa's account there. Uh, Austin is amazing. Nice. You're welcome. Brilliant. Does anybody have any other questions they'd like me to do? I was going to do this one, so I'll just finish off this one for anybody who's still there. Uh, so let's see. Let's... This is something that's probably a bit advanced, but we'll just show you. It's quite a nice wee strategy. So where's my pen, man, Austin? That's here. So if I was going to do something, especially if you're moving into secondary school, something like a half multiplied by a third. If you're going to do something like a half multiplied by a third, this is how I would do it. So what I would do is I would half the bar, like so, and then I would third the bar like this. So if I want to know what a half multiply a third is, because this is a third here, I've chopped it into a third. This is a half, so a half multiplied by a third would be this half multiplied by that third. So I would shade this section here, yeah? We'll shade that section there and realize how many sections have I shaded out of all this now? Good. So basically a half times a third gets us six sections 
But a half times a third gets me a shade one section. So I can see a half multiply a third equals one sixth. So that's something you can do with bar modeling as well. I hope that helped. You're welcome, Pamela. My boys in P7 like to do some more advanced sessions. Enjoyed it, but too easy. Good, Michelle, we can maybe, that's good feedback so we can uh, use that for, for, for sessions going forward. Oh, for, oh, okay then, Michelle Welsh's boys, that's right. I meant to add some, some uh, puzzles. So here we go, Michelle Welsh's boys. Let's see what we have after here. So, So that's not the one I want. <laughs> right, here we go. Here's a puzzle for you. Using four straight lines, pass through all nine dots. Your pen cannot leave the paper and you cannot not go back over a line. But the lines can cross over. Okay? So I'll just read out again. Using four straight lines, pass through all nine dots. Your pen cannot leave the paper and you cannot go back over a line but lines can cross over. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. Let me show you. So let's clear that screen now. Am I sharing the screen just now? I don't think I am, no. So let me see, show you what I mean by that. So nine dots, let me draw the nine dots on here. So the pen can't leave the paper. So I can't go one, oops, I can't go one, two, three, because I had to physically lift the pen off the paper there or off the screen. So that doesn't count. Your pen can't leave the paper. I can't go back over line, so I can't go forward and then back, because that's a second line. Three, so that is technically four lines but I had to go back over a few lines. I can cross over, so I can do things like, I can cross over like we crossed over there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six lines, so it has to be four lines. A lot of people think, see, I've got it, I've got it, and they go one, two, three, four, but that's five lines. So we can do it with four lines only. There's also another puzzle. There's also another puzzle for those who are still out there. Which using three separate ropes separate the seven pigs into seven different paints. The ropes must be in a straight line, and we can't uh, cut off a piggy's tail or a piggy's snout or anything like that. So what I would do, there is answers. This is in the PowerPoints. It's, I'm not going to push forward because it is the answers to these puzzles in the next two slides. So if any parents want their children to do these puzzles or they want to do them themselves, don't go don't push next slide because the answers are on the next slide. But you can download them from my website. You may want to take a screenshot of this puzzle. And a screenshot of that puzzle, print it out. See if you can answer the puzzles. Or download them from the website. But anyway, uh, any more questions? We'll stay on for another minute and see how it goes. For this right. right, so have a go at those puzzles uh, and hopefully it'll be, we'll take on your feedback about what, what you may want going forward. Okay, thank you everyone for tuning in to these eight sessions. We hope to see you again and yeah. Enjoy your summer holidays. See you later, Austin. Bye. See you later, guys. Thanks for tuning in.